And now I, it's my great pleasure to be able to introduce to you Adi Dubash. Adi. I'd just like to tell you just a little bit about Adi, which I've had an opportunity of learning while he's been in Los Angeles. Um, without stealing any of his thunder. Uh, Adi has known uh, of Dubash of uh, Baba. Pardon me, Baba. Adi has known of, of Baba from birth, really. So he's said that it has uh, been a very natural process for him to be loving Baba. Um, and it, Adi and Rhoda both tell the story that um, Baba once said that Rhoda uh, is more Baba's mouthpiece and Adi himself is more the must. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> Adi has shown great potential whilst he's been with us in Southern California <laughs> for being a speaker. So I'll now give you Adi. <laughs> Jai Baba. It is always a pleasure to be amongst Baba children, may they be young or old. Rhoda and I thank Phyllis Frederick and the committee for inviting us here and making it possible to, to be present on this auspicious occasion and share in the love feast. I am not chiseled out to be a speaker. This is perhaps the first time I address an audience this size. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> In our family, we have a division of portfolios according to one's ability and aptitude. And speaking is one of them. <laughs> By speaking, I do not mean yapping or chattering, which is the unchallenged privilege of the fair sex since Adam lost the rib. <laughs> What I mean by speaking, I mean the art of oratory, and that is the sole monopoly of my wife, Rhoda. <laughs> I am an illiterate lover of Baba, and realize I am amongst intellectual giants from the great country of America, <laughs> and will not dabble on the intellectual sphere. Outside of, America, outside of India, the greatest number of Baba lovers are in the States. Baba has made the maximum amount of trips to America compared to any other country, and he has established a center at Myrtle Beach. You all well know, this is no coincidence, but a well-knit plan of our beloved to give a gigantic push for times to come to the most affluent society of our time. History has repeatedly proved that when there is material prosperity and affluence, moral and spiritual values are on the decline. And when this decline reaches alarming proportions, the avatar our beloved Baba comes to our rescue in his own unfathomable ways, which are beyond intellectual understanding or human comprehension. Hmm? 
He counteracts and checkmates, checkmates this godlessness. The godlessness which is the ultimate result of declining moral and spiritual values and sets humanity on the right track. Once I was told by Erich, Baba has said, this time my message will come from the west to the east. And it appears he has chosen you all to project and spearhead his message. The work being done by many of you, the selfless work being done by many of you is praiseworthy and unique. You have made use of every available means of mass contact, posters, books, meetings, movies, radio, television, anything you can think of, and you have done a wonderful job. You have accomplished your mission of spreading his message in a commendable manner. By now, millions of Americans, in one way or another, have come to know of Baba. This tremendous success naturally gives you a feeling of accomplishment, a feeling of elation, and makes you feel happy at having spent your time and energy for a wonderful cause, and I congratulate you. The work you have been doing is unparalleled in this age of materialism. But we must take care not to stagnate there. There is one more step that has to be taken on the path of spreading his message. And if with the required intensity of love, faith, and obedience, we proceed, it becomes our pleasure to do it, though it is a little more difficult. And it, we shall be doing that which Baba wants, to, wants us to do, and it should be a pleasure for us to do it. What, does Baba, what is it that Baba wants us to do? Mayor Baba says, live my message of love and truth. How do we do this? There may be million and one ways of doing it. But I will give you an example that is suited to an in illiterate lover's genius. <laughs> By an illiterate lover, I mean an unread, down-to-earth person who has not mastered the fine art of intellectual gymnastics. <laughs> For example, let us take an occurrence a common occurrence that bulk of humanity has to pass through at one time or the other. The institution of marriage. <laughs> now let us see what Baba has to say on this. Baba says, value of marriage lies in the lessons of mutual adjustment and sense of unity with the other. For a sincere child of Baba, to do what Baba says is a real pleasure, though not necessarily convenient or easy. If you decide to marry, you must very carefully choose your life partner for better or for worse. Till death do you part. Having this decided on your course of action, you get married. And when you make a firm decision and determine to carry it through to a successful end, no matter what may happen, you will find that many other things expected of you fall into place. 
and you have accomplished much more than you bargained for. Marriage is a two-way traffic where both the partners have to make an effort. I will not go into the details of how to work it out. <laughs> But do you realize what all things you have to do to make your marriage happy and bring it to a successful conclusion? Now let us analyze what both the partners have accomplished by going, through, going happily through marriage till death does them part. One has learned the art of self-adjustment, to give and take, to give more than to take. One has learned to appreciate the virtues of the other and ignore the weaknesses, which is the same as seeing good in others. When one learns to gulp a lot, which, in a way, is a diminishment of ego, the ever-important I. In time, lust surrenders to love. Sacrifice for your loved ones is done with pleasure. And one learns to play the second fiddle with love and understanding, and that takes pride in doing so. Trust, patience, perseverance, and tolerance become a part of your life. Anger is now a rare and a controlled phenomenon. When you come to think of it, is it not astonishing what you have accomplished without any special disciplines, meditation, etc., but just by living one segment of your life as Baba wants you to live it. And doing so, you have set an example for others to follow. When you can constantly practice the above with your family, it becomes a way of life with you. Your horizon widens and you treat others similarly. A true Baba lover should be a signpost, a constant reminder to, around, to those around of how Baba would like us to live our lives. A Baba child is not a camp follower, but a trendsetter. I will conclude with what Baba has to say. Baba says, dear friends, if you want to make people love me, don't merely make them read my books and messages. But you leave such a life of sacrifice that others automatically love me. Jai Baba. Since there is time, I'll give you an instance that happened in our life with Baba. In our family of five, three brothers, mother and father, my mother and I are the only ones who are lovers of Baba. My mother suffered a lot physically in ailments. She had major operations. And the last one she had was removal of breast for cancer. She was in Bombay for about three to four months for treatment. 
And whilst being treated, she developed ulcers also. After four months, when the de doctors gave a clean signal that you can go home, my mother and I became home. Within a day or two, she fell ill in Karachi. And the doctor said that, we asked him, can we take her to Bombay because that's a better place for cancer treatment. And he says, if you're taking her tomorrow, take her today. Well, it was not easy, but we managed. And within a week, we were back in Bombay for treatment. She had developed blood cancer. When I reached there, one of my friends says, there's a, Adi, there's a letter for you lying at a place. For the last three or four days, it has been lying. And she gave it to me. It was a letter from Baba, written by Erich. And I don't remember the exact words, but he said, be brave, trust in me. And it, made, it was very clear that the end was near, my mother's end. But still, I wanted to sort of have a confirmation of it, my understanding. So I rang up Arnavas, Dada Chanji, and asked her to come over in the evening with her husband, Narima. When they came, I gave them the letter. And they read it and said, it's very clear. You're right, the end is near. Then came the specialist. I asked him, Dr. Shela, inform my people at home in Karachi. He says, no, we've just taken the blood. And it'll take four days to get the report, and there's nothing serious. I'll tell you after that. Somehow, in my mind, I just couldn't settle with the doctor's advice. The same night, I rang up my people, but it is, this is it, and it's serious. And if you want to come, you come. My father and my brother's wife turned up this next evening. And the same night, my mother died. So Baba warns you, he looks after you, because I was alone with Baba, and so I'm sure, to give me courage, he's, he had that letter waiting for me when I reached there. So many such things in life have happened. This is just one of them. So people talk of miracles. Baba says, I don't create any miracles. It's your love for me. And what he says goes with me. I don't question it. I don't argue about it. There was another instance. And Baba was returning from the States after the accident. His leg was in a cast. In the morning, we met him at the airport, and there was a, he started to talk of his going back to Bombay. They were going to Bombay. And there was quite a rush of air traffic, and tickets were not easily available. So he said, can you arrange by ship? Then he said, no, that takes too long. And ultimately he decided that, no, we must go by air today. So he sent me down to ask for a passage. I went down, that fellow said, sorry, we are fully booked. We can't do anything. But four of them had to go that day. There were more who could follow later, but four Baba said, must go to there. Came up and told Baba. He says, no, go down again and tell him to look at this properly. There must be some room. There was quite a crowd at the counter. I waited, then I told him, look, please have a look again. He went through the list and he said, there are two seats only. I can give you no more. Again, I went up to Baba. He said, no, I must have four seats. Again, go to him. Tell him there must be some room. Again, I went down. This happened about four or five times. He said, yes, there is one more seat. That became three. <laughs> went up to Baba. He said, no. I must have the other one. Again, go and tell him there must be a room. That fellow said, I've seen it so many times. I've told you, yeah, you are, yes, the list. There is none. I said, please just go through it and see. There might be one. And again, he went through it. Yes, yes, he said, there is one more. And the four seats were there. And Baba went. <clears throat> it was after years, after many years, we came to know why Baba was in such a hurry. I suppose many of you know Madhusudan. His wife, Subedra, before she got married, she was very ill. 
and the doctors did not have any hopes for her to live. So she had decided that before I die, I must see my God. She could not walk. She was almost, almost bedridden, you might say. And the family people under those conditions would not condescend to take her. So one night she decided, she took some money from the house on the quiet. In the night, she <clears throat> they were living on the first floor. She could not walk or go down the stairs. So she sat and step by step she got down. There she saw ta Tonga going, you know, it's a two-legged ca horse carriage, Tonga. She stopped him. <coughs> she requested the Tonga man to take her to the bus stand. That's fine. The Tonga man said, all right, get in. But she could not. So she literally had to pick him up and put her in the Tonga. Again, at the bus stand, it was the same story. You had to pick her up and put her in the bus seat. She could not move. Under those circumstances, she reached Nagar, went to Adi's office, seniors. Adi said, sorry, Baba's orders, he's just come from States, and he said not to allow anybody, he's resting. She said, I'm going. I take the responsibility, and she went there. <laughs> on her own. And she sent in a slip of paper, wrote down, and the man on the gate took the slip to Baba. Baba didn't even open the slip. He kept it there, so call her in. And then she cried and said, I'm now happy. I can die peaceful. I don't mind dying. He said, who said you're going to die? <laughs> he said, even if they bash you, you know how they wash clothes in India? The bash the clothes on the... Even if you bash you against a stone like that, you will not die. Yes. He said, you go, take proper treatment, do as the doctors say. And today, she's married, has two children, and she sings Baba's bhajans with her husband. And it was to meet her. Baba wanted to be in Nagar in time, and that's where all this running around at the airport. And this we came to know years later. That's all, friends. As, <laughs> as Kitty had said, Baba says more than talking or reading, it's better to mix with one another and know one another. It's the best way to... When Baba was returning from the States after the accident, don't ask me dates, because I'm not the one for it. <laughs> Now we have a friend, our senior most member from Pakistan, Mino Karas. He has met Baba much before any of us. And he was the one who introduced my family to Baba. We have requested him to speak, but for some reason he said no. However, I think if you all request him, <laughs> he might give you a story of this. <laughs> well, uh, By the love grace of our beloved Baba, we are here today gathered in the love feast of Baba. And for that, let us all get up and say with one voice, Jai Baba, and thank Him. Jai Baba! Jai I do not know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
because Aladdin said and said very clearly, this is a country in our world of today where Baba came many times and where we have the pleasure to see such tremendous work of beloved Baba being done by more than one Baba institutions and with all love in Baba I bow down to all those of you who have really done such splendid work for Baba and are doing. And I do bow down to you all. The next thing is that when these whom I call Baba stalwarts have and are doing so much, they know so much about Baba. Is it not what we learned in school, trying to carry coal to Newcastle? You expect me to talk? I've come here to listen, to learn. <laughs> and I'm very grateful that in my this mission, I have been lovingly given cooperation so far by Elizabeth, Kitty and Jane at the Myrtle Beach, by Darwin Shaw and other Baba lovers in New York, by Rick Chapman, Dr. Alan Cohen, Gursita Dews, with whom each I have had a couple of hours talk and I have learned many things. I'm not bluffing. I didn't know that I will have to speak. This diary, <laughs> this diary speaks of itself. I have written all that I have loved to hear from them and learn from them. Since you all will be more interested in how we came to Baba, as Adi said, it was through Baba's love grace that our family, his family and my family are not separate. Our family came to Baba through Baba's love grace through me. And it took some time both for Adi and Rhoda to be what they are today for Baba. And the strides with which they have come to the position where they are today in love for Baba, you have witnessed yourself. I, am, I hear and I can well understand and I have said before that Rona is quite capable by virtue of her love and devotion and obedience and what not for Baba that she will give you with a bang and I am sure she must have given with a bang yesterday. <laughs> you are here for a few days more and tell her if she has not told the stories in her life with Baba. How in a way with love she challenged Baba. She begged of some blessing and how she got that on her wedding. These are all the external things that you would be interested to hear from me and I have said and I thank you very much once again. But from my side, there is just one love request. If I am to be sincere to your desire that I should speak, and that is my chronic allergicness with which I am suffering, Baba allergicness, for the last 46 years that I have known. And that is this. That Baba, Mehr Baba, as you already know, but feel more deeply than ever before, than hitherto, that he is nothing else, no short than God Almighty himself in one of his ten principal states, which is clearly explained by him in God's speech. God himself 
and when you gather like this in love for baba baba has made it very plain and clear that when more than one meet in my love i am always there and be sure and thank baba that he is definitely here with us this morning and please when you come here and when you come here in future ever feel that you have come here for the love feast of baba and not for a weekend picnic am i very clear yes i'm not becoming a schoolmaster or a grandfather <laughs> but just through love it would be all meaningless if you have come here been here and go away not feeling that feel that you have come here and thank him and him alone for making you to come here with love and the whole story will not end if we do not thank those who have been the medium by baba's love grace for we all to have been able to come here today jai baba jai baba